Three days ago, and after months of preparing myself and the boat for a solo passage across the Atlantic, I departed the island of Lanzarote to head to Antigua in the West Indies. But on my second day at sea, I was called by the Spanish Coast Guard to go confirm the sighting of a migrant raft and got involved in a mission to rescue about 30 people that were going to get lost at sea. In hindsight, I should maybe have turned back to the Canary Islands to refuel and rest, but the weather made it a more difficult operation to turn the boat than to continue. So south I went. Good morning aboard the Polar Seal. Time is 7.30. I guess the sun's coming up. I did not sleep well last night. And the sails are flogging right now because we're in a bit of a wind shadow. Am I eating lasagna for breakfast? Why, yes I am. You may ask why. There's two reasons. One, I didn't eat a big dinner last night, so I'd like something hearty, but two, I'm adulting and I can do whatever I want. I guess three, well, those are it. I'm adulting. Maybe I'll have ice cream afterwards. A little bit of a cloudy morning. Looks like we got a little rain. The sun's coming up there. So we got a fishing vessel on the radar. I think they're a fishing vessel. They don't have AIS. Um, they are refusing to pick up the VHF. So I need to figure out what we're gonna do. This is them. The radar automatically gets the course and then it shows us the danger area, but they're kind of swinging, so I don't know where they're going. I have not changed course and there's a big, I think they've got, oh fuck. Not sure you can see, but there's a line of orange buoys. I would imagine it goes over here too. And they're probably got a long drag line out. I didn't want to get caught up in it. So I quick threw a sail out. Uh, there's, you can see a line that it's being made, the boat. But it looks like I've crossed it. So I shut the engine off. I really have no idea how those like long nets work. I'm always worried I'm gonna run over and get something caught up. Um, and it's, it's a clear line to the ship. Uh, but I don't see any more going that way. So I shut the engine off as we were crossing the line, but I think I'm past it now. So one thing that has been super nice on this trip is that with the new electronics, it's given me a whole new view of situational awareness. So I've set up a, a guard ring around the boat and then I've told the, the plotter that if a object goes into this guard ring or is on a course to go within this guard ring to sound an alarm. So already twice today, uh, I've had two fishing boats without their AIS go by and it has alerted me so it found it automatically um, and then told me like listen they're going to be within your guard circle within so much time. So there's an AIS target here it's it's about to enter my little guard ring which is the white zone so it knows that it's going to and it will come up with an alarm. It's found it on radar and on uh, the AIS so it's flashing. Here she is. Should be about two miles, I think, from me, maybe a little less. Good morning on the Polar Seal. Almost nine o'clock, I had a bit of a sleep in, I guess, today. Had a engine on all last night. There's no wind, but it's very hard to sleep with that motor on. Ugh. So uh, let's go see what's happening out here. It's a little bit of a gloomy day. I think there's about six, seven knots of wind just behind us. I left the pole up because I'm hoping to pull that out a little bit later. It looks like there's some rain in them clouds. I wonder which way they're going. Well guys, I got a very busy day planned on the Polar Seal. We've got uh, shuffleboard on the uh, seniors deck in about 30 minutes. And then I got some pool time scheduled. Uh, freshwater pool, yeah. Then uh, buffet lunch, 
That'd be nice. It's kind of just up to us. Cruise director just said that, you know, you can do a free day today. It's a free day today. So twice a day at uh, eight UTC and about uh, nine in the evening UTC. I download my own weather forecast and then about between 10 and 12 UTC, Charlie, our, my weather router, emails me and then there's usually two hours of back and forth between him and I. Uh, but it just keeps the situational awareness of the weather pretty good. So just downloaded this on Predict Winds offshore app. The weather situation does not look great going further south. Uh, it's, it's like, it's actually super frustrating. So I am where the white dot is. Down by the red is Cape Verts, and then up by that marker is uh, the Canaries. So you see that I'm right on the blue edge, which is confirmed by my wind speed. And I was originally going out to the west, but you'll see as that happens, it just, all the wind goes away. So that's why I turned south to avoid that mess. If I had a bigger boat with a bigger fuel tank, this wouldn't be a problem. Uh, and actually it would work out pretty well. But uh, I've already motored for about 30 hours. The boat can do about 150 hours. So my point is that I'm gonna be really low on fuel by the time I even get to Cape Verde and that's only a third of the way. And I do need some fuel to charge the batteries every once in a while. I haven't had to worry about that because we've got the motor on. So I think as much as I really don't wanna do this, I think I'm gonna swing into Mandelo, just stop at the fuel dock, fill up, maybe spend a night on anchor and then um, then rock out of there. Well, that's the plan right now. See how she goes over the next uh, next little bit. Good morning from the torture chamber that is the engine room or the inside of the polar seal. It is horrible. We finally have got some wind, but boating is never perfect. So we've got wind, but it's dead downwind. It's supposed to go up to about 16 knots later. So it, sh it may be enough that I could go just on the head sail pulled out. Wind is coming back, which is good because I'm going crazy with this motor. You know, I've been able to sail downwind. I've been able to put a poles up myself. I've been able to handle this boat. The thing is, I'm not in a good place right now. The events of Tuesday with this migrant raft thing, I think have affected me a lot more than I thought it would. I thought like, oh yeah, we did something great. I'm really happy for that. I'm happy for those people and I am. Uh, but it was also like, it was super sad. It was super emotional. It was just bad. Like, if I would have come across those rafts a day later, I could have seen a bunch of dead bodies of people trying to have a better life. The thing is, when you see something traumatizing and emotional like that, uh, you typically have friends or other outlets which you can go to to talk about. And I didn't think about that all week until today. So I kind of lost it all this morning. I, and I don't know, like, I don't know what I want to do. I, I want to like I want to do this. I want to go across, but why do I want to do it now? Is it because I just want to finish it so nobody thinks I'm a failure? Because part of me doesn't want to do it. Part of me is like, what the f what the f am I doing out here? I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm grateful that my partner really supported me in doing this, and um, I'm grateful for all my friends and all the supporters and all the the tons of emails I've gotten about this. But the reality is I'm still on this boat by myself and I'm left to figure out and process and understand this by myself. And I'm not sure having one day on an anchor in Cape Verde, I'm gonna be able to do get that all sorted so that I'm good to go on the next leg. And that's a reality I think that hit me this morning and it was really upsetting because I'm not that type of person. It's just been the last few years that, so before I'd say, oh, just suck it up, Ryan, like, why are you feeling this way? 
But now I'm like, wait, like this something's really wrong here. I'm not sure I can actually sort this out in 24 hours. I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna be able to sort this out. So, not sure what I'm gonna do now. I've had time for reflection, I've had time for some really sleep. I've, I've had the ability to experience a life on the sea that very, very few people get to have. Now I just need to decide what's important. It is day six, almost seven uh, for Ryan at sea. And it is very hard for me to gauge his mental state because all I have from him are a couple of emails and then one set phone call a day, which is very short. So I don't really know what's going on in his mind, but I know that for me after Tuesday, I was physically drained, exhausted, and it took me a couple of days to recover just physically and then yesterday it really hit me what happened and I had a really hard time to focus, I couldn't work, couldn't edit, I, I did things that are very unlike me and I really put it on the account of fatigue and emotional stress and so I was waiting for the moment that Ryan would kind of have his crash and this morning he emailed me to tell me that he is not doing very well, he's having a little bit of a bad time, um, so he's about to call me. I, I think this is going to be... I'm going to be the shitty out of the island right now. I don't, I don't want to get stuck there, but I don't know what to do, you know, like... You know, I think that it's normal that you feel this way. And I think that you're going through a bit of a rough patch right now because you're probably feeling the aftermath of what happened to you on Tuesday. And then, you know, you were probably really busy trying to rest, trying to recover because you never really had the time to process what happened to you on Tuesday night. Yeah, I, I think you're right, but it doesn't change the fact that this is where I am, you know? I cry every I've been crying every single day that happened. Every single day. Like, at some point in the day, I just break down and cry. Yeah. I mean, emotionally, of course... so weak, you know? I helped out some fucking You're like, right, you're great. But... And then it just, like, makes me question this whole trip, you know? Yeah. Like, the whole fucking day. I should have just gone to, like, Tenerife and, and said, fuck it, you know? Well, you know, the one good thing with sailing is that everything is temporary, okay? So what you're experiencing right now is not going to last. How you're feeling right now, it's not going to last. I think that if you beat yourself up for feeling this way, it's going to be much more difficult for you to get out of it because it's another layer of shit that you have to deal with. So. I mean, the one thing that always cheers me up is like working out, but I can't. It's so fucking hard to do that here, so that sucks. I just want to get there and hopefully get back to sleep, and like I need to talk to somebody, hopefully. All right. Today is not a good day for Ryan. Um. But we're gonna do what's best for him and find some options to put on the table. I'm gonna contact some people to see if anybody would want to crew with him. I will um, contact this yacht delivery company. Uh, but my feeling is that in about 24 hours, he will have changed his mind, but we'll see. And if he doesn't change his mind, if he doesn't want to continue, that's totally fine too. Uh, we live in a society that values persistence. But sometimes persistence is not the right alternative because it's, it costs too much. In this case, if Ryan feels that he cannot continue, persistence could cost him his life. So if he cannot do this, he absolutely 100% needs to bail out. And I think that it's very healthy to feel that you have options. And I'm glad that I can 
put options out on the table for him. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna contact some yacht deliveries company, see if, uh, if we can afford that, uh, and I'm gonna contact some people who could potentially crew. Uh, it's a bit sad, but I cannot fly myself out to Cape Verde to continue with Ryan because I have professional commitments and some big, big ones. Uh, this, com this coming two weeks is just, I, I cannot, I cannot go. Um, but we'll find a solution. Whatever happens, it will be good. So, with the good comes the bad. Today we've been sailing awesome. We've got seven, six to seven knots of boat speed. It's quiet, except for that. Um, the only issue is that we're kind of going a bit in the wrong direction, 15 to 20 degrees off course. The wind speed, it's back now, but it disappears and the course came way south, slowly coming back up. But in other news, tonight it's pizza night on the Polar Seal. Uh, Sundays have been our pizza nights kind of all the last few months uh, and I'm deciding to carry on the tradition so I've got some shitty pizzas we're gonna put in the oven we've got this uh, hyper dino it's all my food a lot of food in here hyper dino that looks like crap then there's this guy the uh, Mazafina Caprice so we either get the four queso hyperdino or the Mazafina Caprice. I think I'm gonna go with the Mazafina. I'll let you know how I'll let you know how that goes. And here is my craptacular frozen pizza. I will savor every bite. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube land. <laughs> it is the 31st of January. I have been at sea for almost a full seven days. Seven days at 2.30 will be seven days. Last night was probably, uh, as far as sleep goes, the worst night I've had. I didn't sleep much, maybe an hour. It's all right, my little bed that I've got here, it's actually quite comfy. I'll show you where we're going. We're up here, and the Cape Verde's there. The, that's the, um, well, that's the waypoint I'm trying to go to, but you'll see the wind's just behind us, so I'm kind of on this jive now. I'm trying to get over. Cleaning day didn't pan out quite how I expected. Well, it's not horrible. I will say that I decided yesterday that I've already accomplished my mission just solo sailing down here of understanding what it's like to be out by yourself alone at sea. So no matter what I do, I'm comfortable with the fact that I've done what I set out to do, and even if it doesn't mean completely crossing the ocean, I'm okay with that. But let's see. Let's see, maybe I get on anchor, get a night or two good sleep, and we'll move on. Got some very important decisions to make. What's for lunch is one of those decisions. The question that then comes up is, how long is taco meat in the refrigerator good for? I'm willing to chance it. Let's see. There's some bread in there to keep it not moldy. Here, see, taco meat. I bet that's still good. Uh, so we've got some paprika, taco meat that, who knows, I think it's a little over a week old. See, there's some cheese. We'll have that. Carrot, see, healthy. I've been eating healthy. One of our friends brought Sophie in France. These cool, they didn't have, they didn't have an R, but they had two S's, so we've had these. Uh, I need to eat my S, which is actually an R. I'm gonna do that. That's a lot of meat, but I think this is the last day for that, so we'll just kind of, we'll just kind of rock and roll with it. You can't eat this all at once, because I don't think that would be very, so this is my go-to meal, taco salad, some corn chips in there, and then some beef, and then paprika, you can put some tomatoes, cheese in there, 
Oh, it's so good. It's like a mix of hot and cold and veg and meat and it's great on the boat. I love it. This is so cool. There's got to be hundreds of dolphins jumping in the waves here. Oh my god. They just keep going. That is amazing. And they are on a mission. The mission is not me. That's the second time I've jived in the last few days and then dolphins have come after I've jived. It's like a good job, buddy. You don't get to see that stuff. You get to see it out here. I think that's pretty cool. This is not how I pictured the weather coming into Cape Verde. It's raining, it's cloudy. I am about 25 miles away from Cape Verde. Usually by now you could see the big mountains, but you can't see anything. Yeah. It's very gloomy. It is, there's a little bit of wind, but it's directly behind me and it's really not enough. So I'm just pushing through to the home stretch on the Iron Jenny. Like I haven't had enough of that on this trip. I am very mixed emotions this morning, but that's okay and I don't need to explain it. I need to get into Harbor, I need to have a burger. I need to see some people and spend a few days and decide what I'm gonna do next. I will say though, and I said it yesterday and I thought about it more yesterday, is that I, other than crossing the finish line in Antigua, I've accomplished everything on this solo trip that I wanted to. So no matter what I decide to do, I'm really happy with this. I just did a thousand mile solo passage by myself in the ocean. Um, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So I'm happy with that. Will I be okay going to Antigua? Don't know. And I'm not sure I want to find out, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. All right, this weather is horrible. Holy crap. So I have a stowaway on the boat. Eight days and I just realized I have a stowaway. I'm not sure what to do about this. Wee -wee -wee. There's the stowaway. I will now dispose of the evidence. So I'm coming in to Cape Verde. Um, there's stuff to hit. There's islands and rocks and things. Uh, and the radar does a very good job of showing that. Let me show you reality. <laughs> Here. This is what I'm actually seeing. Uh, that's clouds. I think I'm going to be navigating by radar <laughs> to get in. Uh, not ideal, but I can say that I'm used to, you know, the old flying days. I trust my instruments. So we'll be alright getting in there. At least it's the daytime. And just like that, she popped out of the clouds. It was like clouds and then disappeared. That was super cool, actually. Ugh, so this port's got a lot of shipwrecks. Fuck. Okay, I'm putting this down now because I'm getting thrashed about a bit. Hold on. Okay, uh, February 2nd, 2022. Uh, current location, Cape Verde Islands. I arrived in the Cape Verdes yesterday. Uh, and <laughs> it was wonderful to get here, just to like put my feet on solid ground and see people. And it turns out that I actually know a lot more people here than I thought I would. I think it's too early to, for me to decide what to do. We did get a quote from a professional moving company that could transport the boat it's going to be about ten thousand dollars it's very expensive and i'd rather use that money on something else there's a small part of me that's slowly warming to the idea that i can do this i can solo i have a good solo friend of mine here in the marina 
he told me, we're going to have a meeting in 20, uh, 48 hours after you land, but not before then. And he's really stuck to that. He hasn't talked to me about this at all. He's just been like, hey, we hang out. Um, I have to I give him credit for that. He's, he's playing it right. But um, this is supposed to be an awesome trip for me, like a big accomplishment. And I do feel like I've accomplished a lot, uh, but it's, it's coming with a whole bunch more baggage than I ever anticipated. I think that was my thought today. The sea can throw so many things at you. It can sh throw in a, in a heartbeat an unwelcome circumstance that profoundly changes your life. And then in the next moment, it can throw a mo uh, an incredible moment at you that can also change your life. It's, it is amazing how the sea will do that. Which maybe brings me to like a last point is that one thing that I've always really struggled with is control. I want to have control because I feel like with my anxiety, that control brings me comfort. And in sailing, if you want to have control, you will not be successful. You can be prepared, but you can't always be in control. Um, and I, I, I think that's something that uh, this trip, I wanted to get out of it, is how to let go of the control. And let me tell you, I had to fucking let go of the control. So I, I think that's something I'm getting out of this experience, regardless of if it ends here or not. Yeah.